Hello, uh, this is C. Edward Baldwin, and uh, this is uh, my video blog, um, which is basically, uh, I hadn't called it anything, so C. Edward Baldwin talks about stuff. Um, today I wanted to, you know, talk about the uh, 2016 presidential uh, contest. Um, it's a little over a year and a half away. Um, and basically, I, I just want to you, you hear, I don't know if you guys have been following it, uh, anything on the news, but basically, uh, the talk for the last, I guess, couple of days, maybe a couple of weeks, have been, been about one or two things. Either um, we were talking about the statements, or they were talking about the statements that Donald Trump made in reference to uh, Mexicans, or they were talking about the um, upcoming Fox debate stage where I think Fox is going to only allow like the top 10 candidates per national, uh, an average of the national polling results to participate uh, in that debate. And that's really what I wanted to, to sort of put my two cents in about. Because the Donald Trump thing, um, I'm not going to say it's a non-story because, you know, some people feel strongly about it, but I still, but I would push that more into a non-story than something major. And even the debate thing that I want to spend about two seconds or so talking about is really a non-story as well. You know, as far as Donald Trump is concerned, and, you know, he said something about um, Mexicans, um, that Mexico sends uh, their worst citizens over here. You know, they're rapists, they're drug runners, um, you know, just really the, the dregs of Mexican society is basically what he said. And and so obviously people want to run with that. And um and my take on it is one, I think uh Mr. Trump said what he said, not necessarily what he's trying to spin it now with, oh well, I'm bringing a light to immigration. I think he kind of misspoke in that he most likely meant that the Mexican government um, was sending um, their illegals over here. Or in other words, they were sent, there's a lot of illegal, undocumented Mexicans that are doing some of these things that he was talking about. I don't think that he was uh, doing a blanket statement for all Mexicans. But I'm not in Donald's head. You know, he said what he said. Uh, but whether he said it or not, it's still, a non, it's still really a non-issue because one, he still employs uh, Latinos, Mexicans, Hispanics, whatever, uh, on his, you know, in his various businesses. Uh, two, no matter what Donald Trump says, it's not going to make uh, what he said either true or not true. It's going to be what it is. And I think we are in this situation where, uh, you know, you, you got to always be on the watch for what you what you say because the the PC politically correct police are always out ready to just jump on you and uh, attack whatever you say. And workers can hurt. I'm not going to say that they don't, but I, I think we need to dial it back a little bit uh, in reference to, um, you know, some of the comments people make, you know, because you just really blow it up. If you don't say anything with that, that's going to go away. That's going to do its own thing. It wasn't going to make Mexicans um, what he said or not what he said. You know, it would have gone away. But it, it makes for good copy, and, we, and unfortunately, you know, we're kind of in the 24-hour news cycle, uh, which makes a good little segue point for me about the first debate. And all you've been hearing, you know, I, I watch all, you know, all the little TV shows, man, when I'm on reading, you know, online, you know, I like to stay informed. And all you've been hearing lately is about uh, some of the, I don't know, Kajillion candidates for president on the Republican side aren't going to be able to be on that first debate stage. And that's another non-story. <laughs> because who in the world is going to care who participated in the first debate on the Republican side when it comes time, well, even when the New Hampshire uh, primary happens or the our caucuses, nobody's going to care who's on that first stage. And so if I was one of the cats that uh, might not make the first the, the first uh Debate, you know, I had to write some of these names down. Was, uh, my man Lizzie uh, 
Lindsey Graham from South Carolina, Marco Rubio, he might make it, but somewhere or another, I think one of the polls had him on the outside looking in. Uh, my, my, my girl from uh, Hewlett Packard, XCO from there, uh, Miss Farina, might not make it. Um, Ted Cruz might not make it. Uh, Rick Perry might not make it. Uh, Rick Santorum, who came in second last year, might not make it. If I was one of those, and there's several others that might not make it, but if I was one of the, the, the candidates that didn't make the first one, you know, I would look at it like, okay, I got a first round bye, you know, because then I can sit back and and listen to those other 10 just go at it and you don't have to be in that fray. And But if you really want to do a debate, what's to stop the remaining, I don't know, six to 10 candidates from staging their own debate, All right? And who says Fox has to cover it? You know, you can cover it online. You can YouTube it. All six of you can can agree that we can hold it the same day or maybe we'll hold it the next day. Just everybody get together and say, we're going to debate amongst ourselves. If you're so surefire ready to have a debate, uh, you know, that's the way I would do it. Uh, but for me personally, I would look at it as first round by because nobody's going to really remember that first debate anyway. Um, and the way the media is kind of uh, getting it set up is that, oh man, if you don't make the first debate, your candidacy is shot. And that's just so not true. And uh, But again, 24-hour news cycle, got to have something to write about. Uh, let's, let's, let's blow that out of proportion. So in a nutshell, the two main stories that have been going around for like the last seven to 10 days, Donald Trump and the Republican debate are basically two non-stories. That's it. 